it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. We're out in the cold for your viewing pleasure. If you like our channel, subscribe to it, please. Um, today, we have an interesting experiment. I've been brewing five gallon batches for a very long time, but uh, one gallon batches are something that I've been brewing uh, maybe not a short uh, amount of time, probably more like five to seven years, where five gallon batches has been more my, my jam for 15. So. I thought it'd be interesting to brew the same beer, develop a recipe, and try to hit like the, the common metrics that we try to hit, <laughs> and brew it up in two formats. One in a five gallon format, and one in a one gallon format. And I'll tell you, the, the, the true nature of this is to see how much of a difference there is between brewing the same recipe, but for different volumes. Mm -hmm. So that was the main thing that I was trying to get out of this experiment, but I learned so much more, so we'll talk about it. Okay, so I thought I wasn't going to go like, you know, super weird or, you know, uh, let's use ingredients that we are uh, intimately familiar with. Okay. So this is a uh, American pale ale that uses just two ingredients, uh, one great western pale malt yep. and cascade hops. The ingredients um, for uh, both beers I brewed came from the exact same lot. <laughs> like to the oh, and, and sorry, and then a little bit of caramel malt. Yep. Well, we'll talk about that. Mm. Um, but they all all uh, the ingredients came from the same bag per se, if that if that makes sense. Yep. So um, the the base recipe was to hit these two metrics. One, a um, I guess the breakdown of, of um, the, the grain bill, and I <laughs> calculated this to like four decimal points, so <laughs> that's just too much. But anyway, let's just like round up to 95% uh, Great Western Pale Malt and 5% Caramel 40 um, Malt, okay? And uh, I calculated that for uh, what I thought was going to be uh, an ABV around 5%, okay? I uh, did that for both beers, and then the other one was, was IBUs. Uh, so I, I uh, came up with the gimme IBUs that are around 42, um, 42 IBUs, uh, and then with uh, three hops additions, one at 60 minutes, one at uh, 15, and uh, one at flame out. So no dry hopping, all uh, within the, the kettle. And then I also, because our I used our own tap water, and I know that uh, we run a little high um, um, on the uh, chloride side. I added some gypsum just to, um, you know, balance. It's a balanced ratio of, of sulfate to, to, to chloride. So, uh, what Mike's doing right now is he's tasting. I did a we're doing a triangle test, and there's uh, two of the same beer, one of the other beer, and he's trying to figure out the difference, which is okay because again this is kind of like the other triangle test that i set up it's like if he can't tell the difference it's actually a good thing now uh using uh beer tools i also learned that my mash efficiency is uh, a little bit better than 72 percent it's more like 83 percent because uh it's <laughs> a little bit better yeah wow uh, the the og i was trying to hit was like 1050 uh the um tastes like 1061 it was uh, the five gallon batch was uh, 1060 and the, and the one gallon batch was 1061. Uh, the the, um, the uh, five gallon batch ended up at uh, 1011 and then the one gallon batch was 1012. So I didn't want to give that much information, but because yep. it might you know, give you a little uh, telltale nope. that nope. something different. Um, but they both mashed for 60 minutes at 154 degrees Fahrenheit and um, yeah, so pretty much this, what I was trying to do is pretty much the same beer. Like if, if you were to post a recipe online yeah. and you wanted to calculate it for- Scale it to something yeah, different. Your five gallon or for me, like a one gallon. Yep. What would, the, what would the differences be? So I gave you three beers, tell me what you're thinking and then you know come up with your final answer of like trying it's, to figure it's, out- uh, It's tight, it's, it's really <laughs> okay, tight. That's good, that's good. Um, right off the bat, the first thing I perceived aroma wise is I felt like number one had a little bit more candied orange than the other two, which is interesting because we're talking about Cascade here. Um, um, and to some extent, I sort of felt like 
then that two and three shared a little bit of the same body structure, but but flavor-wise, they're all very, very, very tight, and I'm probably splitting hair as it trying to find the difference, and I I don't think I can find the difference to be honest with you. Again, but I was going to guess. If I was going to guess, I would say that number one is the outlier. Okay. In that two and three are the same beer. Okay. I'm happy to report that number two is the different one. Nice. Yes. So with two being the different one. Do you want to like do a bonus question or do you just want to say forget it? No, I, I love bonus okay. questions. Bonus question. Yes. If you know that one and three are the same beer and two is the other beer, yeah. which is which? Which one's the uh, five yeah, gallon yeah, batch yeah. and which one's yeah. the one gallon batch? And if you can tell a difference, then I'm like, okay, and maybe we have something there. What I'm trying to do is just like prove out that like brewing one gallon batches for smash videos is, uh, is still cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to like well, delete everything. It's totally cool. The whole channel depends on it. Um, it's all right. Cool. Um, yeah, I can't taste the difference at all. Um, <laughs> the uh, man, um, maybe this is the. I can't even begin to think how I would, using the palate, taste a one gallon batch versus a two, <laughs> a five. Um, I can't, I can't. I guess I'm going to say that this, number two is the one gallon. Number two is the five gallon. Okay. I mean, I had 50-50 <laughs> shot at it. It um, is totally fine. Um, the only, and I, you know, and I said that because I figured, well, why would he waste one gallon on two glasses? <laughs> <laughs> but I did, because um, I'm a nut. Yeah. But uh, the one gallon was actually, um, when I was tasting at my house, um, I actually liked the one gallon better. <laughs> yeah? Why is that? I don't know. There was like a little bit of um, kind of a, and I don't know what it was, but there was like a little bit of an off flavor to the five gallon batch. Like maybe it was a little bit too bitter, which doesn't really make any sense because I think, well, yeah. if we're talking about like, you know, using decimal points for IBUs, <laughs> the five gallon batch was a little more bitter. I think, I think you've done an amazing <laughs> job uh, calculating things to be even in that mm. structure. Um, that's pretty pretty amazing to get there. And the fact that the colors are pretty much, like so here's the two different beers. Um, you know, it's like hard with me behind it, but like, there you go, that's a decent shot. I mean, they're the same. They're, color wise, they're the same. So that in of itself is pretty uh, amazing. Um, could you brew these, did you, I'm, I was trying to get, get my tasting done and I really don't uh, fully absorb everything you're saying, but um, was the, I know it was all the same ingredients, but it was brewed on different days, right? Yes. Okay, so it's not like you um, made six gallons worth of grain bill and then took a gallon's worth of grain bill out, right? No. So, so to be able to hit the color spot on by doing it that way, by just using maths, oh my gosh. Um, Math and science, man. Who, who knew? Who, <laughs> who knew? knew? Who knew? Um, so cool. Um, it's, it's so I, there's, there's. So I'll tell a little bit more of the story. Did this on a weekend. On Saturday, I did the five gallon brew, um, and then you know chilled. Did the same procedure I always do for a five gallon batch with an uh, immersion yep. chiller. Chilled it really quickly. Uh, pitched my yeast. One packet of US05. That was the one thing I forgot yep. to say. Like, yep. <laughs> clearly the same yeast for yep. for both beers. Um, and then for the one gallon beer, I, I also did a rapid chill, but it's like an ice bath. You know, yep. I put it in my yep. utility yep. sink, cold yep. water. You know, the same amount of time it takes to chill down five gallons with an immersion chiller I can do in a, yeah. in a, in a sink um, for one gallon. And, uh, but pitched like, you know, I, I try to, um, to do a good job of measuring out, you know, uh, the amount of grams of yeast that I need yeah, yeah. for like a yeah. one gallon, which is kind of like, I just say like, eh, a third of this, which is really what it should be. It's going to yeah. be like a fifth, yeah. but I just, I go for it. So maybe there is something about like pitching a little bit, a uh, larger amount of yeast for the one gallon that's like needed. Maybe that's when I'm detecting a little bit of cleaner yeah, flavor. Yeah, so going into this, I figured the only shot I would have at pulling the two apart would be um, pitch rate. 
right? Would be trying to find a fermentation difference and not necessarily an ingredient recipe difference, mm. right? Uh, I figure that's the only way to really try to grab hold of it. Um, only because like, you know, if you were, it'd be really easy to sort of like super pitch the one gallon batch, um, you know, versus the five gallon batch, uh, you know, especially if you're using dry yeast, um, maybe you're just like, ah, screw it, I'm putting the whole package in and, you know, um, that would be an interesting experiment of itself, right? We'd be doing a one gallon batch with a full pack of USO5 and a five gallon pack with a one, a five gallon batch with a one, a full package of USO5, uh -huh. right? And can you taste that? I mean, sort of force the, um, pitching differences via volume, not yes. via package. Cause yeah. you can't, it's really hard to accurately say with dry yeast. I mean, you could weigh out, you know, three grams versus an 11 gram package, but it, in this example, you could drive that experiment via volume, but that's a science discussion for another day. Um, so yeah, no, I, man, it's, I, I really can't do it. It's, it's, it's amazing that's how tight thing. it is. It's that's yeah, a good, it's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's amazing how tight it is. Yes. Cause I think like the overnight chill, I was like, ah, he's not going to get this. And you had, you nailed it. And I was like, ah, okay, maybe there is a difference. Even, even now that I know everything, I still can't, the, the differences are minute if they're there at all. Yep. The, the, Very good. Uh, the only other thing I'd say is that the five gallon batch fermentation, at least from a visual standpoint, uh, was much more vigorous. You know, mm -hmm. the Krausen was mm -hmm. more, you know, thick and such. And then the, the one gallon batch actually took uh, a longer amount of time for that Krausen to like settle back into the beer and like kind of drop out. So I was kind of like, okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I and wonder I, if, um, like when you're, if you were, so you run out, well, adding the beer into the fermenter is really where you're probably getting some oxygenation of the wort and you've got five gallons worth of runtime through your, knowing your brew pot, yep. right? So you yep. probably get it, you may very well have been getting better aeration of the wort for the five gallon batch than you did for the one gallon batch. One gallon batch is in and done. Yeah, I, I, I pour it into a funnel that goes yeah. into the one gallon. Right, and it only lasts jar. for like, that's not that. a very short period of time, whereas the little spigot on your brew pot, you probably yeah. get a little more, more. So that could have that affected, could have but it has an affected flavor. That's right. That's right. So. so good, good. I don't really have anything more to say outside of like Great. doing this kind of experiment. I was like taking measurements <laughs> that I, have, I haven't taken in a, le a long, long time. Like I was taking the you know, the refractometer measurement at the pre-boil for both of these. Uh, just so you know, like the uh, pre-boil uh, bricks or the calculates up to a, a 1048 starting gravity. <laughs> and then the pre-boil for the one gallon was 1045. So yeah. like, you know, for the the boil time, again, 60 minute boil for both. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting to see like the one gallon uh, got me to a higher starting gravity than the five gallon. You know, just because of the volume thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Not yeah. like different so controls. different, just like a couple of points difference. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then I use all like the understanding of my mash efficiency to do a really big beer. Remember how you were saying yeah. like holiday beers? Yeah. You know, one category is really big. Yeah. I I chose category. Yeah. I chose door number one. So we'll talk about that because I know uh, if you've watched this channel, I've had struggles hitting a really high starting gravity um, with some of these big beers. And, I, and I, 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 using sort of what I learned, I was like, hmm, I oh, wonder fantastic. if I can break this up into two mashes at the same time, put some grains here, put some grains here, let things sit, let's take some measurements, and then we'll have a I great- I can't wait for that video. It's gonna be a great video. All I got right. some- Let me know when that drops, I wanna watch that one. Yeah, well, okay. well, yeah. When we break off like 2021, like yeah. the it's gonna be brew dude. You go your way, I go mine. Yep. Oh no. Are we announcing the breakup? Pandemicdudes.com. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we'll still be doing stuff together. That's how it goes. Uh, if you like this long rambling chat about like five gallon versus one gallon, I think the the one last thing I'll say is that it's so wonderful to put out something on the internet and say like, hey. Grain bill, percentages, hey, yes. IBU, even though yes. like in these modern times, I don't know if IBUs is even something we should even... I hate IBUs, but... I know you do. It's a different video. But look what I did. I yeah. was able to like yeah. get the same kind of... This is why talking about recipes and percentages is the best way to do it. Yes, and too bad we don't do that more often. End rant, end rant. <laughs> Anyway, if you like this kind of rambling, especially when we like go on tangents right before we're about to wrap things up, 
uh, like this video. Cliffhanger. <laughs> Subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you like to get notified when we put videos up on, on the internet, on the YouTube, then, uh, you know, bang that bell or whatever the heck that is. We've been doing like two videos every uh, every week in December. Hopefully you're you know you're hanging in there because we are. For John and Mike, brewdashshoes.com. Brew on. Cheers.